Welcome to the technical portion of NSO. My name is William Darby and I work in the Technical Support Computer Help Desk. Uh, we're located on the third floor of the ERC building, which is the library. Uh, the easiest way is uh, just to go up to the Open Computer Lab and once you're up there, they'll be able to help you with anything they can. not They'll send you back to the Help Desk and we can help you with stuff. Um, you have a username and password. Uh, what that username and password is going to do is it's going to get you into all of the systems here at Pellissippi, like your My Pellissippi, your email, your online courses, the computer, pretty much everything. The, those accounts are for you guys only, even though you know your parents may have access to it. Really, they're not supposed to, and it's just in the college's rules. It's nothing to really worry about. Uh, the important thing is that your password does expire every 90 days. That's even if you're taking classes or not taking classes. So that can be a little bit troublesome. But what I want everybody to do is go ahead and open up the, one of the browsers, either Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox. And once it comes up, it's going to pull up Pellissippi's web page. And uh, once that's up, what I want you guys to do is go ahead and click on the link for webmail up at the top of the screen. Okay. Now, once this page comes up, it's going to have a few links of importance and a little bit of more information uh, that you guys might need. It's got a link below the click here one that says can't access your account. If you guys ever have trouble getting into your accounts, like any time of the day, no matter what, you can click on that link that'll let you reset your password, look up your username, set your own password, whatever you want is from there. We've also got some uh, online chat, a link for an online chat with directly to the help desk, as well as a number you can text in questions to us if you need to. Uh, but now you guys can go ahead and click on that link that says click here. What I want you to do is go ahead and log in to your web app. And like I said, that's going to be the same username and password that you used uh, you know, when you signed up, when you signed up to my Pellissippi. Now if that doesn't work, it's not a big deal. What we can do is later on, you just give us a call at the help desk and we'll get you fixed right up. It's normally it can be one or two things. That's easy enough to fix. Okay, and once you guys are in, just uh, go ahead and click on the button towards the upper left hand corner of the screen. It should be the picture of a little letter and it should say compose. What you're going to do is you're actually going to send an email to Olivia and uh, that way you can get used to sending an email inside the system. Now there's a few things I want to go over about the email accounts and everything. Um, you do want to check it daily because even if you're not taking classes this semester, it will uh, still get emails in it. So say you're taking classes in the summer and in the fall, but during the month of August, it'll still get emails if they send them out to everybody. So you want to check that. Once it hits 20 megabytes, it's not going to be able to send or receive emails. All you have to do is just delete them and empty your deleted items and it'll get it fixed up. You don't want to try to forward your email to another address. I know a lot of people like to forward their email to say a home address and everything. You don't really want to do that. A lot of the school's distribution lists don't work really well with forwarding, so you may get an email, your instructor may try to email you at your school email and it may not get forwarded on, but you're still going to be responsible for it. And of course the most important thing is our telephone number is going to be 694-6537. What you want to do is, you'll probably want to save that in your phone, because at some point or another during the time you're here at Pellissippi, you're going to call the help desk. It's, we're here to help you with your, you know, get into your account you're having trouble with certain pieces of software, we're here for you guys, we're here for the faculty and staff. That's why we're here. You don't need to be afraid of us or anything. Just give us a call if you're having troubles. We'll get you fixed up. If we can't get you fixed up, we'll at least point you in the direction you need to go. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about their email or anything else like that? So you recommend if they could not get in, they should just contact the help desk. Absolutely. And you guys will get them set up. If Absolutely. They've forgotten their password, you'll help them reset it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's you what we're here for. Up there. It's also written on the board over there. Yeah. On the, the Like I said, don't be afraid to call the help desk. We're here to help you guys. You know, everybody forgets their password every now and then. I know I do, and that's what we're here to help you guys with. That's it. Oh, well, you are speaking. Okay, <laughs> okay cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
So then it's my turn. Okay, great. All right, awesome. So before I get started telling you guys all about the colors on the board, I'm going to start off with what I like to call an icebreaker, which is very fun, mostly for me. And then we're going to do this together. We're going to bond through the art of embarrassment. And that starts with your name, your major, and your favorite animal noise, and making that noise all by yourself into the sounds of the universe. So think about your favorite animal, whether it's a dog or an elephant or whatever, and you get to make that noise out loud in front of everybody. And uh, we get to get it recorded, and we're going to show everybody. So I'm very excited about this. Think about it for just a second. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to make you do that. I'm just joking. Um, but I am going to get your name, your major, and a fun fact. I do like fun facts. And I'll start. My name is Olivia Daniel. My major was English. I just graduated. And um, fun fact, you already know I'm from Las Vegas. Um, I like to sing. I sing at my church, First Baptist Concord. That's what I'm most passionate about. And I will go to you guys next. My name is Jackie Rose Davis, and I actually graduated in May. Um, I'm doing a 2 plus 2 program with Tennessee Tech. I was an elementary education major. Uh, fun fact, I don't know, I really like animals. I love dogs. I love volunteering at animal shelters, and I have a lot of dogs. Like, if you look at my Facebook, it's like all pictures of animals, so people probably think I'm weird. Probably would have liked to do the animal noises, huh? Yeah. A little bit. Oh, <laughs> darn. Okay. Mood. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Ken Swain, and uh, I'm a faculty. <laughs> I'm just playing around. I'm a, <laughs> my awesome. mom got that for me in Florida. She could tell I needed it, right? I'm a faculty member here at Pella City State in the Electrical Engineering uh, Technology Program. Olivia's already told a fun fact about me, so I can't really use that twice, I don't guess. Uh, yes, I do like to barefoot ski when I'm able to. Um, my joints are a little uh, rough these days, but I still try to do it once or twice a year. I am an avid baseball fan, love baseball, and I love spending time with my family. I, gave, I guess I gave you three now. You get to know more about me as we go along. Okay, so I'm going to start off telling you a little bit about things that I've experienced here and what I've seen to be very important from student to student. Um, there's one word on here that I put in red. Which word is that, my friends? Indeed. And there's a reason it's in that, because red is usually a very important color. Your email here is uh, very, very important. It is how we will communicate with you. Anything and everything that has to do with college will be sent to you through your email, which you now have. So it's important that you check it every single day. If you don't check it, then you're going to miss something. It's not a matter of if, it's when. So you're going to find out financial aid information, scholarship information, um, whether or not you won prizes, different skill shops on campus everything that has anything to do with anything. Your professors are going to use your email. They're going to send you information about, I don't know, projects and homework. You guys have got to check your email. There's always somebody who doesn't, and then they miss something, and they're like, oh, well, I didn't know. I didn't check my email. And I'm like, I think you're lying. But I think you're lying because you did know. So I'm letting you guys know, because you're the Lime Green group, and I've already told you this is the best group, which means you have to be the best students. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, OK, good participation. I like that. OK. Other ways that we communicate with you on campus, Panther Paws newsletter. Now, before I carry on, later on in the tour today, uh, we are actually going to have a little prize session. Certain things on here are going to be asked of you. And because, again, you're the best group, you're going to raise your hand into the sky, and you're going to give the answers. Because I'm going to tell you what I believe some of the questions are going to be. Okay? One of those is going to be the Panther Paws newsletter. They're going to say, hey, hey, where are those? Where are those newsletters? Where can you find these fantastic things? And you're going to go, hey, I know. Um, and they're really good group, you're not really going to ask that, but you might offer it. The Lime Green group, and then you're going to say, they're found in the bathroom stalls. Because Pellissippi encourages double tasking. That's what we do. <laughs> so that's where you find those. It's a bi weekly newsletter. All the different events on campus are put into this newsletter, whether it's club information, whether you want prizes, if you want to know um, what events are going to happen within the next two weeks, that's what you can find in this newsletter. So it's really, really helpful to stay connected. We also have an iPods video. It has all the same information as the newsletter. It's just another way that we put it out there. You can find it on the website, and you can also find it on YouTube. So if they ask you what the video is called, you guys are going to go, I pause video, right? Just like that. OK. And we also have bulletin boards. I know you guys are smart enough to figure out what a bulletin board is, but I like to point it out because you're going to see that we actually do update them, and they have really good information. Like I've gotten to do different classes because I found them on the bulletin boards, and one of them was like a kicking, but, you know. Um, there's a big Lego man, not really, but he's like in a big padded suit. He's like a, a defense class. And anyway, I found them on the bulletin board. My point is to look at the bulletin boards. You'll find really interesting things there. Okay, next. Who here 
Okay, who here would really like to, oh, I don't know, go to Italy to study photography, possibly for free, and be college credit and not miss classes while doing it? Just as an example. See, I feel like there's at least besides you, everybody who's lying. You don't have to go to Italy. Yeah, you don't have to go to Italy. It's just an example. If you can go to Italy for free and get college credit, I think that y'all would do it. Okay, but there's also Mexico, there's Peru, there's Ireland, there's Scotland, there's Africa, there's uh, Mexico. We've got so many different opportunities. TINSIS is our study abroad program. This is an incredible program, you guys. If you get the opportunity to go on this, which you actually all have the opportunity to go on, do it. It looks amazing for your resume. You guys will have a life-changing experience. I've never met a student who's gone who didn't come back saying the same thing. My life is forever changed. It sounds cliche, but I'm serious. Like everybody says the same thing. It's like, well, I guess there must be something to this. I don't think you're lying. So um, I really, really encourage you guys to check it out. In fact, I meant to write down the website. Humor me and write down this website as well. www.tncis.org. You guys will have opportunities to find out about this, but TENSIS is an incredible program. Um, have you ever studied abroad or anything? Do you know anything no. about this? Um, I know, not from this school that have, but I mean, I know multiple people that have, and they, like you said, it's a life-changing experience, and they just think that it's awesome. I mean, it's something that you'll always talk about and always remember, and I mean, it's right. just a great experience, you know? I wish that I had, now that, I, now that I'm graduated and that I haven't, you know, I wish that I would have taken advantage of all the resources. Exactly, because it's, it's not only does it look good on your resume, is it fun, but you make so many friends on these trips and you get to experience things you would never be able to experience. As far as finances, they've got different scholarships available. Um, as a student here at Pellissippi, you're almost guaranteed, I believe, like almost 50% um, off just to start, just because uh, you're a student here. And you don't need to have a 4.0 GPA to go, it's not like that. And we're actually really fortunate when we go on the tour later and I'll show you where the office is. Our campus, just this campus, is where it's actually located. Because Tennessee is not limited to Pell City. It's a Tennessee thing. So we're lucky because we actually have an office here. So you guys can go in there, talk to the people, get to know them. It's a really big advantage that you have. So take advantage of that because you guys do have it. This other program that I'm about to talk about, most of the student leaders don't mention it. I just really like it because I've gotten to do it, and most people don't know about it. It's TISL. Um, oh, side note, Tennessee might be a question there. So um, TISL is the Tennessee in Intercollegiate State Legislative. Don't worry about that, I just call it TISL. And basically, my example is who likes to drive around, and as you're going through the red light, I mean, stopping at the red light, sorry, and then it takes a picture of you, and you get a ticket, and you didn't stop enough, okay, because you're turning right on red, and then, then you get a ticket later on, and you're like, seriously, I stopped. Anyway, you get a ticket. You have two options. You can, what I like to do kind of sometimes is complain about it, or you can go to a program like this, TISL, and learn how to write a bill and make changes. And that may not be what you want to change, but I like to use it as an example because we can all relate to how annoying that is. And most people just complain about things. But I really believe, here's another cliche for you, children are our future. And though we're not children, we are the future still. So I think it's important that we know how these laws work and how they're you know, put together and how bills are written. And when I first found out about this, I thought, this is going to be a lot of extra homework. Why would I want to do this? Seriously? Like, why would I want to learn how to write a bill? That sounds really complicated. And then I found out how to do it, because I was like this one little tiny short workshop. And it is like the easiest thing on the planet. I couldn't believe it. All these senators, and you know, there's the House, and there's you know, blah, 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 all this stuff that we, nobody seems to ever understand. It's the, it's the simplest process on the planet. These guys are telling us how to live our lives, and it can be a great thing, or it can be something that's, you know, you just have to go along with because you're not willing to make any changes, you're not willing to learn anything. And I really believe in taking you know, advantage of different opportunities and finding out how things work. This program is free. You can go if you want to go. It's only offered in the fall. And they actually send you to Nashville. You get to stay in a really fancy hotel for a few days. And you get to meet all kinds of students from all over the state. And some of them are beginners, some of them have been there for a while. It's such an amazing program. I went to this and it really did change my life. I mean, it's. It opened my eye. It opened my eyes to how how everything works. And when you know how everything works, you have a different perspective, and it's really valuable. So, student to student, I really encourage you guys to do that. Um, is anybody here not perfect in every subject in the whole world? I can't count. That's my thing. My math makes me cry. Over my self-esteem. So, um, Trio is a great program because it is a free program, which is pretty much everything on campus. And it offers tutoring for any of these subjects that you may not be good at. Even if you're graded at the life happens, 
college can be hard sometimes. So we're going to offer you all kinds of programs on campus. And we also have skill shops that are free. If you look around and you're checking your email regularly, you're going to find out how to do these different things. But when we go on the tour, um, I'll show you where TRIO is. They give you free treats. They take you on field trips. It's actually not called field trips, but it's still a fun phrase. But they will do all kinds of things. There are a lot of perks to it. But we do offer free tutoring. So if you're not good at something when life happens, you know, we do offer different resources on campus that you guys can use. Um, PTK. This is the largest honor society. So I know if I'm going too fast, please, you know, interrupt me or ask a question. It's fine. It actually makes it more interesting for everybody else because I know I talk a lot and get lost in my own thoughts. Um, PTK is an honor society, and it's the largest one internationally for community colleges. If you get into PTK, then you get to stay in it forever, even if your GPA drops. In order to get it, you have to be invited. In order to be invited, all you have to do is get a 3.5 GPA for one semester, and they will invite you. If you are invited into this club, into this society, join it. It will open the door for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of scholarships for you. Even if you have a 4.0 GPA and you're really involved on campus and you apply to a different university, you may not get a particular scholarship because they also want you to be in PTK. And if you don't have a 4.0 and you're not you know, really involved on campus, but you are in PTK, they have scholarships for that too. So it is just, it puts you at an advantage about everybody. It's a really, really great society. So check it out, work really hard, try to keep your GPA about 3.5, but no, once you're in, you're in. So it's a really big deal. And how are you going to find that information? Where are they going to send it? Email. Yes, exactly. See? Thank you. For Elodie, can I add something about PTK? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm in PTK, and you know, um, they invited me in. And the thing that concerned me was whenever I went to the meeting, you know, they were like, okay, we're going to do all this. And like, they have all of these huge like events and programs and like just tons of stuff that they do. And like, they have meetings and they just. I mean, you, you can be extremely, extremely involved in it, and you can spend like all of your free time doing it, or you can be not involved at all. You know what I mean? Which I'm not going to say I wasn't involved at all, but for me, that was an issue for me because I study a lot, and you know, I focus a lot on my schooling, so thinking of having something else that I was just going to have to do in my free time kind of, you know, made me kind of against it. But you don't have, you, you can be as involved in it as you want to, is what I'm trying to say, but still get all of the benefits from it than someone who, you know, goes to every meeting or does every activity. So I just think, I think that's good, you know what I mean? I think that's a great point. Yeah, a lot of people don't join clubs. That was, that's a good point for the clubs too when we get over to student life. Just because you join something doesn't mean you have to give your entire life. I mean, you want to try to do as much as you can, but that's an excellent point. You don't have to be there every single meeting. You're not going to get in trouble. So that's what I'm saying. Like, if you join, just join. Just get it. it. It's good. You go when you can. <laughs> great point. Um, skill shops already talked about that. We've got skill shops just for anything and everything, whether it's the calculators and math, and show you how to use those, whether it's how to manage your finances, whether it's self esteem classes. I mean, we literally have a skill shop for everything you can imagine, and they're free, and you'll find out about them through your email. So, just another fun fact about school. This, even though it's not in the right order, this to me, based on what I've, I've experienced, is your most valuable resource professors. You guys are going to have a lot of professors, and they are going to be great. The professors here on campus are overqualified. And yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you're going to find a professor you don't love or whatever, but you guys are going to have opportunities to get to know these people. It's not like high school. Who here is just out of high school? OK. So you're probably used to like the teacher-student relationship, which is fine. There's still that same element of respect. But aside from that, they look at you as an adult. It's a completely different mentality. They'll help you when you ask, but they're not going to hold your hand. And the benefit to that is that you get to know them on a more personal level. Like, I've gotten to know professors that have gone to their house for dinner. And I've gotten to know them in their profession. It's going to help you so much with networking. When you're building your resume, you need a letter of recommendation. Getting to know your professors will make all the difference. If you ignore every resource on here, don't ignore this one. You want to say a few things? Yeah, I'd love to say some things about that. Um, it, and I agree with her 100%. You do need to get to know your professors. But how do you do that? That's a good question. Go to their office during office hours uh, to seek help if you're having trouble with the class or to just meet with them for a few minutes. It's, uh, I wouldn't go every day unless you need help every day, but uh, pop in every now and then to let them know of your interest in the class and how things are going. Uh, all professors uh, have an interest in you. Uh, we all uh, are very student focused. We're interested in your success. And I'm speaking on behalf of the faculty here. My wearing the rug a while ago is not on behalf of the faculty. That was just to embarrass myself. Uh, but at any rate, uh, 
but I, I want to encourage you to, to not to be afraid of your professor. I wore the rug. I tell you a little bit about myself just to let you know I'm a human being, okay? Your professors are human beings. Uh, yes, we have achieved certain levels of success in our profession. Uh, for example, I've got 13 years of experience in engineering, uh, in industry. You're going to find that with a lot of your faculty. They've been there, they've done that, they've got the t-shirt. Uh, then they bring that experience to the classroom. You're going to have an opportunity to see some really dynamic uh, professors and accomplished professors here on campus. You're going to see them in the English department, much like Ed Francisco, Bookie Reynolds, a uh, whole host of, of folks are uh, not just entertaining, but they're very good at what they do. Uh, in addition, you're going to see it in the science department. Uh, you're going to see it in uh, the engineering department, math department. Every department here has very highly talented and qualified faculty. You're going to find that they are human beings. They have lives outside of campus. They're interested in their family. They're interested in uh, activities uh, other than uh, their profession but they also have a lot uh, within their profession that they're very interested in. Uh, but the thing that you need to understand is they're very interested in you and your success. Uh, so don't be afraid to approach your professor. Don't, don't think that they uh, don't want anything to do with you. Uh, go to them if you need help. Uh, try to build that relationship and uh, take advantage of uh, uh, the opportunities that are there for you to, to uh, uh, learn more, uh, to become more knowledgeable, uh, to develop skills, and to develop relationships. And also develop relationships with one another within your class. Mississippi State's a great place, and uh, I think that you're going to find that your experience here is going to be really positive. And I'm sure that you're going to talk about time management, mm. skills workshop, right? And the one on time management. They do you're, have that. You're going to find that to be very important to you, time management. Uh, just to I'll shut up here in a second. No, no, go for it. Let me say this really quick. Uh, think about it this way. You're carrying 15 hours of course load, okay? Uh, that's three hours a day worth of schoolwork. How many hours should you use outside of class for studying, roughly? Um, What's the average figure? Um, doesn't, it, doesn't it say two hours? It's, it's about two, it's about two, two hours, hours for class. every hour you're in class. If you're in class for three hours a day, that's six hours of studying. That you should at least schedule for your classes. Now will you spend six hours? Maybe, maybe not. Right. Depends on the class. Some you'll be really strong in and you'll be some more successful in. But on average they say about six hours uh, for every hour you're in class. Well suddenly that's nine hours out of your day. Uh, do you sleep at night? Well sure you do. Eight hours of sleep. So that's 17 <laughs> hours that's been used out of 24. Do you eat? Does it take, do you eat three meals? Is that three hours worth of your day? Suddenly you're up to 20 hours. Now you've got four hours left over. Uh, I hope you shower, I hope you <laughs> uh, get ready uh, for bed and prep for bed properly so you just lose another 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, so now you're down to three hours left in your day. What do you do with that? How do you spend your time? Think about those things because you have to schedule your time while you're in college and you're an adult. It's going to be up to you and your success will be up to you. We will be there to help guide you along. And uh, so at any rate, from a faculty perspective, uh, we want to see you be successful. Just to follow up on that last thing he said, I know it sounds kind of cliche again, you know, there's a lot of those going around, but they care about your success. He's not lying. I mean, you're going to see that they actually are student focused. If you give them the opportunity to be there to help you, they're going to help you. The only way to really get on the bad side of a professor is to show them that you don't care about your education. And they're going to notice that when you're not showing up, or if you're late all the time, if you don't turn assignments in. But if you're not good at something, they're all about helping you. So definitely listen to what he's saying because he's making a lot of really good points. I've experienced it. So if, if you do show them that, you know, you can show them that you don't care or you can show them that you do care. And if you show them that you do care by talking to them, trying to have a relationship, you know, coming in early, just asking them questions, it can make the biggest difference in the world. Like you said about the recommendation letter, I had a chemistry professor, Mr. Pennycuff, if you can get him, get him, he's mm -hmm. awesome. And I hadn't had him for a couple of semesters, and I sent him an email, hey, can you, you know, do this recommendation letter for me or whatever it was. And, you know, if I hadn't made him remember me and I didn't have a relationship with him, he would have been like, uh, who the heck are you? You know what I mean? But he knew who I was, so it's, it can really help you out in the long run. I mean, get to know them like, like everyone's saying, they want to help you, and they're, they're there to help you, and they want to. So definitely. take advantage of it, definitely. Yeah, like I said, if you guys don't listen to anything, listen to what we're saying about professors. That's going to be your best resource on campus. 
And last but not least, for resources here, counseling and advising. We do offer counseling. I'll show you where that office is later. But as far as advising, a short story, there is a girl, this is a true story, there's a girl who did not meet with her advisor every semester. And we have online articulation agreements, which are now called universal pathways. It doesn't really matter. All they really mean is that these are the classes you need to go to this school. These are the ones that are required for this, blah, blah, blah. And we keep them as updated as possible online, and that's good to take initiative, but they're not always updated the way you think. Things change. And they may seem like they're the most updated, but they often, not often, but they can, um, they can be different than what it looks like online. She thought she was doing it the right way. She spent like two years here, and she only had a few classes that she needed. She needed to redo everything, and she thought she was ready to graduate. What I'm telling you is meet with your advisor. Don't take advice from your friends. And unless a professor knows exactly what's you know, going on with your particular situation, don't even listen to professors with that. Go to an advisor, somebody who can look at your exact schedule and find out what you need. Because you may be done sooner than you think, or you may be doing all the wrong classes. So don't make that mistake. You're going to be wasting a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of like energy. So I promise you, meeting with your advisor every semester is not a waste of time. Don't take advice from your friends. They've got good intentions, but they don't know. Come with me this way, my friends. <laughs> not that friends aren't important. We want to, you know, make them. We just don't listen to them. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Okay, so here we are at Student Life. This is my favorite part. And this is because this is where I got to get involved here on campus. And I want to encourage each one of you to take advantage of student life. The only reason I'm doing this now is because I got to be a part of everything. And when I first started here, um, networking was what got me the job that I got. And it changed my life completely. Networking is probably your most important responsibility in college. If you network, you can get further in life than people who've got a great GPA but never meet anybody. Who you know in life makes a big difference. You've all heard it, it's so true. Um, I got to meet a girl who was working uh, for Student Life and she introduced me to Kim Thomas, who I put up there. I'm the only leader that does this, so you're lucky. This is why I tell you your group is special. Um, I'd like for you guys to know who she is. She's the Student Life Coordinator. When you get to meet her, she is the most fantastic lady on the planet and you will see why I like her so much. Nobody doesn't like her. That's really good English right there. But anyway, everybody loves her is what, really what I'm trying to say. And <laughs> she's fantastic. She, you just can't meet her and not be like, oh my gosh, I just love you. Point being, I got to work as a student activity board member, which means I got to help plan all the events on campus because I met the right person because I took initiative. And from that point, I was nominated as student president. I got to represent the entire college. And I got to go to Nashville and meet all the other student presidents for the other institutions here in Tennessee. And then I got to be the writer editor of the Panther Paws newsletter. And the reason I'm telling you all this is not because I'm sitting here bragging. It's because when I was in high school, though I loved high school because it was a performing arts school, I was so not there for the academics. I didn't really apply myself. I wasn't ready for it. And when I came to college, I was ready and I understood that it was about taking initiative and it was about taking my future and making it what I want it to be. And student to student, that is what will set you apart from everybody else. If you choose to do something awesome, it'll be awesome. If you sit back and you wait it, you know, wait around and you don't try, you're not going to get anything out of this and it's going to be a lot of hard work and you're not going to like it here. But this is an excellent college. So don't misunderstand community college, you know, as being something that is less than fantastic, you know, just because it's community college as opposed to university. This school is awesome. It's high quality. The professors are wonderful. And um, if you take advantage of that, you guys can have the same opportunities. I never would have thought that I'd had those kind of opportunities here. And now I've got a resume that I, ne I just never thought I would have. And I hope that you guys listen because these are paying jobs. I have a really fun job. Look what I get to meet you guys and just talk to you about what's cool on campus and get paid to do it. She gets and paid by the word. <laughs> she makes a lot of money. Can you imagine how awesome <laughs> that would be? I'd be like, that'd be so cool. I wish. That'd be so rich. Oh, see, now I'm sad. I'm really sad. Um, but anyway, I want you guys to know that um, this is what you don't do in the middle of class. If your phone goes off, what you do is you keep it on vibrate. That was, a, that was an example of what happens when your phone is near you. Learn. Learn from that. Okay, but anyway, I'm sorry. Um, this is so much fun. That's my point. It's so much fun, and it's such an amazing opportunity to meet great uh, faculty and staff and get to be a part of things. You can see the VPT majors over here. They're recording things. If you guys want to be a part of that, and if you don't know what major you want, the video production technology department is awesome. We had people like Seva. He's one of the professors who have been doing it for like 30 years, and he's like Grammy nominated. I mean, these guys are the best of the best. When I say it's awesome here, I am not lying to you because I don't think lying is right. 
and you shouldn't either. So, okay, so moving on. I could go on forever. You see, this is if I got paid by the word. COSA, we have a student government here, and it's called COSA. That stands for Council of Student Advocates. Don't worry about that, just call it COSA. Every other student government at every other institution in the state is SGA, Student Government Association. For some reason, ours is called COSA. Don't, don't ask me why, I have no idea. Um, but that's what it is. So if you guys want to get involved, if you want to be a, a new student orientation leader like me, like her, um, then you can get involved that way. If you want to help plan events, especially guys, guys have an advantage because girls seem to get more involved then guys, I don't know why we're always looking for guys, um, then talk to Kim about that. If you, That's part of COSA. If you want to be a student ambassador, which means you also help with tours, but you help behind in the office areas, it's another paying job, um, that's part of COSA. We've got a lot of opportunities. So if you have any questions about that, please talk to me. I really, really want you guys to know what I know. That's why I'm here. I'm passionate about this because I saw what it can do, and it's amazing. Connect the Pieces is a program we have here on campus. I like to tell you about it. It's just a little piece of paper. They call it a program, which makes it sound more complicated than it is, but it's not. It's just a piece of paper, and you take it around with you, and you get little signatures when you do different things, and it tells you what those things are. And by the end of the semester, you turn that paper into the Student Life Office. They'll tell you when and where when they send you a what? Email. There we go. <laughs> They're listening. When they send you an email, they'll tell you where and when to turn in your Connect the Pieces paper. And for as many signatures as you've gotten, that's how many times you'll be entered into our contest to win prizes. And prizes can be uh, laptops and they can be we fit things and we, we, yes, we, you know, we have student life money. We just like to buy you things. That's really, you guys are going to see how many things we give away. We feed you all the time. I have over a dozen t-shirts just from just random events and you guys are going to get all kinds of other things. We just give things away all the time because you guys pay student life fee. And we've got clubs. You can join or start one. I really encourage you guys to get involved in this way. This is another great way to meet faculty because each club has a faculty representative. You know, he could be one. Any of the professors could be one of those. So um, we've got outdoors clubs. We've got, um, I started a club here on campus. It's a Christian club, Pal Palisade Collegiate Ministry. Um, we've got Frisbee, we've got, what other ones are there? There's, there's theater. Some, and there's technical. Technical. Uh, the uh, IEEE, if you're a technical person. Uh, the IEEE actually enters a robot competition, uh, usually every year. Uh, there's a couple of years we haven't done it, but we place very high our students. Uh, if you're in a technical area and you're interested in that, uh, take a look at the IEEE. That's a plug for the technical department. Right. It's been very successful, by the way, in the southeast. Uh, we have, in uh, four, four years that we have competed in it, we've been in the top 13 in the southeast. And you say, well, top 13, that doesn't sound like great amongst community colleges, but I need to qualify that. There are only two community colleges out of a field of 55 this past year uh, that were entered in it. That means we were competing against university colleges in the southeast, and some you would recognize, big names. Uh, Georgia Tech, ever heard of them? University of Tennessee, uh, Auburn, uh, and we placed 13th amongst that field. So the technical side also has clubs and, and right. uh, opportunities for people to be involved. Sports? Yeah, we've also got sports. Sports, mm -hmm. sports. intramural, intramural. Not, uh, rec center. You can do any sport that you want. They've got like a soccer club or something, don't yeah. they? Or They've got intramural, every, the intramurals. Or, even yeah. there's not mm -hmm. clubs, I mean, there's basketball, there's golf, there's tennis, there's racquetball, there's mm -hmm. soccer, there's there's we got a fishing Everything club. There's you we even have a skiing class in the winter. Um, we obviously don't ski here on campus because that would be kind of awesome, but not exactly possible. But we do take you there. We also have um, there's the bowling class, like Hillary bowling. Was about. <laughs> yeah, you guys can bowl, <laughs> which is apparently really awesome. <laughs> um, there's just so many different things. We have um, underwater archery. Yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just lying to you. That was just, I'm just <laughs> I made that up. Um, but we do have archery, which is kind of awesome. And a great workout facility. Yes, and a dance studio, yoga. Um, a lot of those classes, some of them aren't actual classes you sign up for. They're just free classes on campus, which we will notify you. By email. Yeah, by email if you want to do those. So we have a ton. That's actually the bubble. Like I was, I put little bubbles to make it pretty for your pleasure. Look at that. Um, visual pleasure. Um, anyway, <laughs> the bubble is a great place. Like she said, there's all kinds of things that you can do there. And uh, like I said, the clubs, if you don't find one that we already have, you can start one. Starting one looks awesome on your resume because you started something, and that's what you can put down on there. I led and developed the blah, blah, blah club. Oh, wow, this person takes initiative. I think I'm going to give them a scholarship. That's kind of how that works. So um, if you decide you want to start one, it's basically just a piece of paper and finding some people who want to do it. That's about how easy it is, and it's a lot of fun. I did that with the Christian club. 
Um, imaginary gardens, anybody here like to draw, paint, write poetry, uh, write stories, anything like that at all? And this is something you'd really like. Um, you can get your work published, you just submit it, you'll see on your email and also on the Panther Paws newsletter and in the iPaws video when and where you can submit your work and you can get it published and that's another awesome thing that looks great on your resume. Um, I've had some different work published in it. You guys will get to see it when we go down to the student life area. It's, it's a great collection. It really is. They've gotten better and better each semester. So, um, And last but not least on here, Fine Studi. It's kind of like Where's Waldo? You all know what Where's Waldo is, right? Because it's like so much fun, like childhood stuff. Um, it's like our Where's Waldo. Fine Studi is like this little blue man, and uh, he's hidden on campus. And the first two people each week to find him, they send Kim Thomas an email. And they're like, oh, he's posted on the stairs in McWhorter. And if you're the first of two people that week to find him and send her the email, then you get like $7 for lunch. And they do that over and over each week. So if you happen to see him, don't assume it's like too late and somebody may not have sent an email. So it's kind of a cool thing that we have going on on campus. Hey, so, could, could I mention one other thing that yeah. really is, you know, it probably doesn't fit in really that strongly with any particular category, uh, but it probably does a little bit under student life. We have a, uh, a couple of faculty here on campus, uh, uh, Trent Eads and Keith Norris, uh, who have been very instrumental in putting together what we call a faculty lecture series. Yes, awesome. If you're around campus and you see these beautiful bright posters and it says faculty lecture, uh, you know, Annie Gray, Dr. Annie Gray or some other professor giving a lecture on campus at a particular date and time, you should attend that. The reason I say that is because it's an opportunity for, for you uh, to see that uh, certainly a, a very talented person, uh, whoever it may be, uh, giving a presentation within their field of study can increase your knowledge, but it also gives you a chance to find out what other faculty uh, uh, are, are engaged in here on campus and, and outside of campus. And so it kind of gives you a broader perspective. And uh, it's a great event, and I encourage you to be a, a part of it, take advantage of it, have one a month usually, uh, so there's usually nine in a year, and uh, so those guys have worked so hard on it, and uh, they do a great job, but it's worthwhile, I think. That's a great thing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really glad that you mentioned that. I'm going to yeah. start talking about them more because that's, remember when I was up there and I was talking about how much I love the English department, that's my favorite class? He just mentioned some of the best professors that we have on campus. Annie Gray, Keith Norris, Trent Eads, uh, Edward Francisco. Um, David Key, David Key's actually history. These are all professors that I've gotten to know personally. They are so, well, I mean, what word do you choose? They're just, <laughs> they're great people. They are so good at what they do. They're so passionate about students. They actually lead a club on campus called Gnosis. It's spelled G-N-O-S-I-S. -S. You're going to see a lot of that when you're walking around. Um, and, and I believe it's connected to. Does anybody know what Gnosis means? Um, oh, I did. Like mm. learning or like a... Knowledge or something? Isn't That's it? Greek for knowledge or oh, know. Oh, look at that. There you go. To know. It's Greek and knowledge. I knew that. Look I know at me. So. Guessing right. To know. To know. Um, and it's so much fun. It's just basically a club about whatever you want it to be about. That's why it's so much fun. And if you want to learn about something, they'll, they'll figure it out and they'll make a field trip out of it, which I like to I keep using field trip even though we're not like little kids anymore. I'm kind of in denial that I'm growing up. But anyway, so they have great opportunities. If you guys get to join a club, Gnosis is a lot of fun. And you get to know those professors. And the faculty series, that's such a great point. They're so interesting. Um, okay, and uh, last but not least, these are just general tips. And I kind of repeated some things because I believe learning with repetition is a great way to learn. Check your email daily. That could be a question later. They're going to be like, how often do you check your email? And you guys are going to be like, oh, I'm Green Group daily. And you're going to get a prize. Uh, do not open your textbooks because you may not need them. Just buy them, keep the receipt, keep the wrapping on there. The professors have to put a textbook on the syllabus, which you guys are going to find out what that is when you get to class. Your syllabus is basically your contract. It's in that class. It's going to tell you what to expect through the whole semester. And don't lose it because it may say, oh, this is due on this date, and they may not remind you. And when that date comes around, you better have checked your syllabus. It's going to keep you organized for that class. They're extremely important. In high school, I used to lose mine. didn't matter. You could just throw it away. They never used it. In college, they use it regularly. They're going to refer to it all throughout the semester. So please take the syllabus seriously. It's the, a big the deal. The syllabus, also, we have a master syllabus online. Uh, all of our syll syllabi are uh, posted online. So you can actually go to our website and probably search on our website on, on syllabi. Uh, or a syllabus, and or master syllabus, and it'll take you to a link 
to where you could actually look that information up and maybe look at your classes that you're about to enter into and get an idea of uh, what's going to be expected of you. Right. I recommend syncing your syllabus with your planner. You know, I gave you those little yellow sheets that I told you not to lose. Keep those and you'll get your free planner. Once you get your syllabus, literally, it'll say, test on this day, this day, this day. Write it all in your planner and use your planner because if you don't, it's hard a to project track. will come up on you the next day and I mean, I'm like procrastination station already. So oh, I like that phrase. Trust me. I'm totally stealing it. <laughs> <Do> it. <laughs> use your syllabus station. and sync it with your planner. It will help you. You won't even believe how much it will help you. And I know you guys are probably sitting there thinking, yeah, I know how to use a planner or whatever, but we're telling you these things because, like, we, we, we just it. know. We've been there, and it's yeah. so different than high school. It really is. And these things are going to make a huge difference for you. So you don't have to take the advice, but if you do, you're going to be happier people. We want you to be happy. We're here to make you happy. Um, I, I really mean it too. Okay, and attendance, uh, TBR, Tennessee Board of Regents, they're the people that are overall all the institutions in Tennessee. They make rules. Those rules say that you have to be present in your class as a minimum of 75%. And if you are absent beyond that, even if you have an A, you fail. Just how it goes. Your syllabus may specify a different amount of time, though. You may have to be there more depending on the class, which is another reason why it's so important to look at it. So just keep that in mind, and that could be a question later. So they're like, how often do you have to be here? You're like, 75% of the time. That also applies to your labs. If you have a biology class, for example, you'll have a lecture component and you'll have a lab component. You have to be present for 75% of the lecture, 75% of the lab. They go hand in hand. So don't think that you can get by by skipping out more of the lab. If you have 10, uh, for example, if you had 10 lab periods, uh, you, you, you have to be there for 75% of those. So you have to be there for eight of those labs, lab meetings. So and in your you best interest, sure. don't miss any. You will yeah. not be happy with yourself. I have made that mistake. Don't miss class. Don't do it to yourself, unless you really have to. Um, moving on, parking is not your friend. In the beginning of the semesters, it's just not. There's not enough of it, and eventually, after a few weeks, people stop coming, or they figure out their schedules, and this and that, and it kind of evens out. But the first few weeks, you need to be like at least 20 minutes early, otherwise you're going to be late for class. So that's just an FYI. You'll see. And again, a reminder, meet with your advisor. Is there anything I want to add? Is there anything you guys want Can to add? Can I add one thing? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I have one tip that I always tell incoming students, and you've probably heard it before, and you're probably going to be like, oh, yeah, okay. But I'll, do not ever be afraid to ask questions, okay? Oh, yeah. No matter whether it's fellow students, like, you know, I'm probably going to ask Olivia stuff today because I'm new at this job, you know, and I've asked him things. I mean, ask, do not be scared to ask questions. This isn't high school. People are not going to laugh at you. Half of the class is going to be thinking the exact same question in their head, and they're going to be glad that you asked. Seriously. But don't be embarrassed. Don't be, you know, afraid to ask for help. It's not a flaw. It's not a bad thing. You know, like we said, the professors want to see that you care, and they want to see that you need help. So just don't ever be afraid. It, you will not get through it if you don't ask questions. If you think that you can do it all on your own, you're mistaken. Yeah. I, just, I just don't, you know, lots of people are like insecure or they're scared to ask questions because they think it's a bad thing, but it's a good thing and it's something that people look, you know, look up to. It's a good quality to have. So that's my that's one so big true. tip is to never be afraid to ask questions no matter what it is. Your professors are going to respect the fact that you're, you're asking. It's going to make a big difference. Yeah, look, let me just mention this. Meet your deadlines. Okay, and she had a great idea. You're, July 1st, you're allowed to get a planner, right? College is going to provide one for you. Make use of it. Know what your deadlines are. Meet those deadlines. Because most professors are not that forgiving. When they've given you a deadline, they expect you to meet that deadline. So uh, definitely uh, do that. If you have some extenuating circumstances that come up, it depends on your professor, but in my case, if somebody notifies me ahead of time and uh, comes to me and makes the effort to come to me and they explain their extenuating circumstances and I make a reasonable judgment about that, say, yes, that does make sense, uh, you know, uh, that is a, a valid excuse, let's work something out here with you on that assignment, uh, then you'll find the professor will be more willing to do that. Go to them after the assignment, chances are it's not going to work out for you. From an advisory point of view, I'm going to put my advisor hat on. See your advisor. She's already mentioned that once. See your advisor. Uh, how many of you know what you're majoring in? Okay, um, most of us do. Uh, hopefully that stays true, that you continue in that field and uh, you find that interesting and 
and uh, that is your passion. I always tell my students as I'm advising, you know, find your passion and then pursue it. Uh, that, that's real key in your life. Uh, and part of that is a journey, figuring out what that is. If you come to a point where you're not satisfied and you think, well, this wasn't really what I thought it was going to be like and I want to make a change, don't be afraid to make the change. Okay, people change their majors. I changed mine three times. I've changed mine three times. I'm actually going to change it a fourth. Well, we got something in common then. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Uh, don't be afraid to change your major. Now, don't just go out and change your major. Well, I want to do that. I wanna, don't bounce around. Do it uh, with due diligence. Uh, do it with planning. Uh, figure out what your interests are. And hey, don't be afraid to take a class. That, hey, you know, I think I might like that, but I don't know. You can take the class, try it out, and see if that does fit you know, your, your interests and try to discover those interests and then what you're really passionate about. If you can find what you're passionate about, you'll never work a day in your life and you'll still get paid for it. That is so true. Um, I wanted to tell you guys one more thing about advising that I forgot to tell you. With your advisors, we're all assigned an advisor. It's kind of based on your name, your last name. Um, just so you know, if you meet that advisor and for some reason you just don't click, they don't, you know, they're just not the person you want to speak with for whatever reason. Like I had one, he was a really nice guy, but I just didn't feel like we could communicate the way I wanted to. Um, there are other advisors available and you're allowed to find somebody that can help you. You know what I mean? Don't feel like, well, this is my only option. And you know, I mean, I could always suggest some great advisors. So if you have that issue at all, please send me an email. That is my email up there. You should also have it in your folders. I am so willing to help you. So if you have any questions, I've had lots of students contact me, even semesters down the road. So. Don't, don't hesitate to do that. And I want to show you guys one quick thing. You don't have to log on, but I do just want to show you one thing before we leave. Could you, yeah. on, try to pull it on Could you really quick? Yeah. Oh. And, no, I'm so sorry. I should have just kept it down. <laughs> it's easier to pull down than put up. I'm just going to show you like literally one thing. That's why I hope I have a smartphone when I teach. So it'll just be up there. Oh, yeah, those are neat. You talk about the, the, yeah, the thing. I know what you're talking about. Say what? Is that what they are? They have like smart board and they have like active board and they have like a bunch of different brands. It's pretty awesome. As long as I don't have to pull the thing down, I'll be fine. I wanted to show you uh, just two, actually I lied to you, two little things. At the top of the uh, website, who here has, aside from today, not been on the website and looked around like intentionally to try to find things? Okay. So real quick, just to help you guys out, I call this the yellow pages of the whole website. At the top of the home page, there's an A through Z index. This saves a lot of time. You click on this and everything that has to do with anything is listed. So if you don't remember how to find your email, if you don't know how to find, I don't know, your faculty um, information or I, I, anything, bookstore information, student life information, it's all right there. So on the home page at the top, A through Z index. That's really, really helpful. And then I want you guys to know about the bottom of the home page. Right here, there's a little tiny link called Pellissippi Alerts. This thing is awesome. If you click on it, and, you just, and then you just click here to register, it's free. And the, uh, the college has this set up so that you can register for free, and they will notify you when you do not need to drive to campus. Whether there's bad weather, um, or one time we had a pipe issue and there was a flooding on campus, just various things. It doesn't happen often, and they don't blow up your phone. They don't send you any spam. They will only send you a text message if you don't need to drive to campus for some reason, and they notify you before the news stations know. So it's a really, really helpful thing. It's called Pellissippi Alerts or Mobile Alerts. You know, you're going to hear both things, and um, it's really helpful. It saves me trips. If you live far and you don't like to drive places for no reason, it's kind of a cool thing. So if you guys have any questions about that, just let me know. But it's on the home page at the bottom, Pellissippi Alerts and A through Z index. Any questions, guys? All right, great. So we are going to go walk around. I'm going to show you things that are awesome. And um, make sure every time you log on a computer on campus, you log off because you don't want your information to get used. Yeah, I'm going to.